Hey folks, Eric Maldonado here. And we're looking at um, when should a business owner uh, set up a traditional 401k for your business? And uh, here I have a flow chart of options and considerations for either setting up a traditional 401k or you know a simple IRA, a solo 401k down here as I'm zooming in, a SEP IRA. So this is a flow chart that um, a safe harbor 401k. So I'll, I'll flow through this a little bit and give you an idea of what's the right thing to set up and when for a um, for a business owner. And then as a obligatory dis disclosure, as a fiduciary and financial advisor, owner of Aquila Wealth Advisors, this is for information purposes. It's not specific advice. Always consult with your professional before implementing. Okay, moving right along. Does your business have employees? Yes or no? I'll just go with the no route because it's simplest. Let's say you're a solopreneur, a soloist, no employees, or maybe it's just you and your spouse, uh, no other full-time employees, and um, you want to contribute into a 401k or some sort of a tax-deferred vehicle uh, that allows you to put money in either pre-tax or post-tax and then save for the future and pull it out tax-free or pull it out uh, taxed, but after it's been deferred for a while. So um, so let's say you don't have any employees and do you want to contribute more than $66,000 a year? For now, we'll just say no. And let's say you want to put 10, 20, 30, $40,000 into, a, into a, a retirement account. And then are you an older business owner? I guess that means like 50 plus and um, so let's just say you're, you know, under 50 and are you looking to contribute more than 25% of your net compensation? Yes. So that's where a solo 401k would come into play. A solo 401k is like it sounds, it's, it's meant for one owner employee. There aren't other staff. You don't have any, anybody else on payroll full time. Uh, you can also have your spouse actually, however, so you and, or you and your spouse can be in the business. And you could still do a solo 401k. Um, the benefit of the solo 401k over a traditional 401k is just it's simpler to set up. It's more like an individual retirement account in that you don't have to do all kinds of uh, paperwork and um, you know means testing and and set up uh, you know a census for employees and and you don't necessarily even need a, a record keeper and a third party administrator. And all these kind of people that need to come into place when you set up a, sol a regular traditional 401k, a solo 401k is, is uh, much more streamlined uh, because you'll, it's only you. But you still get the benefit of being able to put in tens of thousands of dollars. So if you're under age 50, you can do 22500 into a, a pre-tax or a Roth employee contribution wearing your employee hat that you're paying yourself money. And then you can also uh, fund the profit sharing component of your solo 401k. So that is pre-tax, but that would be like your, your, your company is essentially funding for you profit sharing. And so the company, your business gets a deduction. And when you take that into account, you can do up to $66,000 in one year plus catch up. So if you're over age, if you're 50 or over, you could do another $7,500. But the big takeaway here is, is it's it's really streamlined, easy to administer. It's pretty inexpensive compared to a traditional 401k in terms of like the fees to set it up. It's really reasonable. And you can fund $22,500 into a Roth 401k. Um, and it doesn't matter how much money you make in terms of um, the income limits. With a, with a Roth IRA, a Roth individual retirement arrangement, you actually aren't allowed to fund it if you make too much money. So like if you're married, file and joint, somewhere around $200,000, $218,000. If you make more than that, you can't put money into the Roth IRA based on government rules. But with a solo, a Roth solo 401k, there is no income cap and you could still get money into a Roth. The benefit of the Roth solo 401k versus the pre-tax is um, when, you, when you go to make the distributions, when you take money out, when you're in retirement over age 59 and a half, that money is not taxed. It's all tax-free. It doesn't even really hit your tax return in terms of any kind of... Um, you know, record keeping. Um, it's completely out of the purview of the government when it comes to distributions. So you can grow it 
hopefully grow it as you invest it. Uh, tax defers, so you don't pay any tax as you're growing it. And then when you go to pull it out, there's no tax. Now the negative is you don't get a you don't get a tax deduction on the way in like a pre-tax, but on the way out, it's a way to have a tax-free, a kind of a true tax-free asset for the future later in life that you don't have to pay out one day. And um, I'll, I'll probably do another video at some point on the pros and cons of that. But I'm, I'm a fan of the Roth 401k for the reasons I just listed, you know, tax-free freedom, uh, don't have to deal with taxes. And if, if, if tax rates are going higher later in the future, which many people think they are, um, it doesn't, it doesn't touch you. It doesn't affect you because all that Roth money is tax-free. Okay. So that's a flow through chart going down, um, from, from no businesses, from no employees, sorry, as a business owner. And then I'll just go to this one offshoot here. If you want to contribute more than $66,000. So say you're, you know, a high, high earner, you know, some sort of professional services, um, and you, but it doesn't have to be professional services, but oftentimes it's, you know, maybe, maybe you just don't need a lot of them. You don't, you don't have any employees and you're making really good money and you want to be able to put money away. And, and maybe you're also older and you want to just kind of hyper fund or take advantage of, you know, these next five, 10 years before, you know, retirement age sets in, you can do a defined benefit pension plan and, you know, in that example, you can do hundred thousand plus, hundreds of thousand of dollars tax deferred. Uh, that's a that's a pension plan. You're basically creating your own pension. You know, so think of Social Security, which is kind of a pension, or you know, teachers have pensions, government employees have pensions. You're creating your own pension, where you you hyper fund it on the way in, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand per year, and um, and then it, it's tax deferred, and you you pull it out. It's taxed on the way out, but at least you got deferral. Um, and uh, you're able to get deductions of, of quite a substantial amount of money. So that, that involves a little bit more nuance. You, you'd want to speak with someone about uh, specific to pension pension uh, plan um, creation. Um, and then this here going down, if, you, if you're not necessarily older, you don't want to put more than $66,000 $66, per year, and you don't want to put more than 25% of your salary um, or your compensation, then that's what a SEP IRA is for. A SEP IRA is, is um, you know, very simplified. It's an individual retirement account. It's basically like setting up a Roth or a traditional IRA. Um, it's just an account, and you're able to do up to 25% of your compensation. There's no Roth. There's no Roth option to be tax-free later in life, and there's no um, uh, there's no separation of like employee contributions versus employer contributions. It's just all based on your net profit to the business. Take 25% of that, and that's what your max is for the SEP. Um, so there's that. Now let's go more into if you have employees, you have a business, and you have full-time employees, you have payroll, you have staff. What's um, some important things to look at when you're considering a 401k and setting that up? So we'll just flow through this. So are you willing to make employer contributions on behalf of your employees? So let's say you want to do a match. The answer is yes, and you want to have um, kind of a simplified administration set up. I'll, I'll flow all the way over here to the end. Have a plan that's easy to simple and set up to administer. And set up to uh, administer. A lot of times, especially for business owners, that this is kind of their first foray into setting up any kind of a benefit for employees as, a, as it relates to retirement. Uh, they want it to be easy to set up. And they want to be able to match their employees. That way, they can, you know, come to the come to their staff, come to their employees, come to their people there, um, and say, hey, we have a benefit for you. We're going to match. And um, you know, for you as the employer, the business owner, it's not going to take a whole lot of uh, time out of your already probably busy day as a as a business owner. So if you have a hundred or fewer employees, and um, do you have a hundred or fewer employees who earned five thousand dollars or more last year? No is the answer here, but that's because you can do as many as you want for a safe harbor. But I'm trying to get down to the safe harbor 401k, which is easier to set up and administer than a traditional 401k. So safe harbor, what that means is you're you're volunteering as the employer to fund up to four percent of their salary in terms of matching. So um, if your employee is earning $50,000 and they put in 4% of that, 
which is two thousand dollars, then you as the employer would match two thousand dollars, and that'd be the max, the max matching that you would make there. So you would do that for each employee that contributes. And if they don't contribute, if they don't put any of their own money in, then you don't match. But if they match, but if they contribute all the way up to four percent of their annual salary, then you would you would match that um, as the employer. So it's a, it's it's a benefit. It's kind of a um, you know, uh, an employee retention tool as well. Okay, so outside of that, then you have more of the traditional 401k where there's a little bit more nuance as it relates to um, kind of uh, means testing. And, and every year, you just got to make sure that as the business owner, you're not putting too much or too little in as compared to the employees. So I'm not as big of a proponent of, of kind of a non-safe harbor 401k just because there's more there's more to deal with and and think about and address each year it's better to just go with um, a safe harbor 401k a lot of times to make it easy on you um, and then here this part talks more about the simple ira so that was the the question before do you want to have a simple setup and you have a hundred or fewer employees you can do a simple a simple ira which i'm actually not as big of a fan of because um a lot of, in a lot of ways, it takes just as much effort to get the employees' contributions funded into the simple IRA as it does into just a regular safe harbor 401k, except with a simple, um, there's just not as many options. You can't do a Roth, a Roth component for the employee contribution, and there's no profit sharing uh, av availability to the business owner. So this is a flow chart. Hopefully that helps a little bit looking at some of the... Um, some of the ways to think about setting up a 401k, uh, a solo 401k uh, for your business. Again, I'm Eric Maldonado, owner of Aquila Wealth Advisors in San Luis Obispo. And you can sign up for our newsletter at aquilawealth.com, A-Q-U-I-L-A, wealth.com.